Look, I'm gonna save you some time in case you can't watch this entire Batman ranking video. Batman nipples wins every category, okay? <laughs> the Batman has finally released, directed by Matt Reeves, starring Robert Pattinson, and every time we get a new iteration of Batman, we get a whole lot of stuff that comes with it. A new Batsuit, a new Batmobile, a new Gotham, new villains! And since we've had several of them in the past, what I'll be doing here for you in this video is giving you my ranking of everything Batman related. I'll be ranking not only the Batman movies, who has the best Batsuit, the best Batmobile, best Gotham City, best Bruce Wayne persona, Persona. All of that stuff that we love to see in Batman movies, I'll leave timestamps in the description if there's a specific category you'd rather listen to or skip over. But I definitely want to hear your Batman ranking down below, whether it's your favorite Batman, the favorite bat suits, whatever it is. If you go ahead and do that, subscribe to the channel and leave a like, I will go ahead and give somebody their own 10 inch Batman Funko Pop. I love this thing right here, it's so well detailed and well, I just want to keep sharing the love about this new Batman film. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and dive into it now. Starting off with the Batman movies rank that way you get an idea of what are my favorite versions of the character so the rest of these rankings might make a little sense. Number nine on the list of course is probably going to be everybody's least favorite Batman movie and that is Batman and Robin. Look I'm right there with you if you're someone who finds enjoyment out of this movie and you like seeing it every now and then. I was a kid who grew up watching this film over and over and there is sort of a fun element to be had here but at the end of the day we gotta admit they just went a little too far with the goofy Batman really made it feel like Adam West Batman with millions of dollars to spend on a movie. We gotta remember this was the film that killed the Batman franchise for a while. Next up on the list, Batman Forever, okay? I have a soft spot for Batman Forever, not only because of Jim Carrey's Riddler in there and how wacky and funny he is to watch, but I actually see the hints of seriousness that Joel Schumacher was trying to throw in with this movie, dealing with the psychology of Batman. Sure, it was still campy and goofy and what led to Batman Forever, but I really don't think it's as bad as some people remember it to be. Next up here, Batman vs. Superman, the only movie I can consider as a semi solo take for Ben Affleck's Batman since the boy never got his solo movie. I'm sorry, Ben. But this was a movie that really frustrated me, made me mad. I felt like I hated this movie for the longest time. But over the years, re-watching it more and more and seeing the ultimate edition, which makes the movie way better, I've actually grown to like this film as the middle part of a trilogy in Zack Snyder's DCEU, starting off with Man of Steel and then ending with Zack Snyder's Justice League. It actually flows really well, and as far as just looking at the Batman side of things, Ben Affleck was a great Batman. Let's just put aside Jesse Eisenberg sticking Jolly Ranchers in people's mouths and really rushing the DCEU when they should have taken their time. Next up here, Dark Knight Rises. The film to me in the Nolan trilogy that I found has the most holes, the most flaws, but at the end day, it's still a Christopher Nolan movie that is done really well. The cinematography in this film I think is the best out of the entire Nolan trilogy. I also really like what Tom Hardy was doing with the Bane character and how he was actually used as a real intelligent threat, not just a muscle bound man who breaks the Batman. I just don't 100% love every choice that was made for the ending of this trilogy, specifically Robin. Next up on the list, Batman Begins, a movie I wish I could love and feel as passionate as some others do, but I gotta admit, this film still brought Batman back to his roots, made him a dark character. Is the film that if this didn't happen, people would not be taking Batman seriously and they would still be having them war flashbacks back to Batman and Robin and thinking Batman can only be a silly family friendly character. And being a lover of origin stories, I like seeing Batman put on his suit for the first time, build his gadgets, how he learns to become Batman, and all that stuff was done really well, even if they pushed aside one of the best Batman villains, Scarecrow. Next up, Batman Returns. This is a movie that was very controversial for being super dark when it was being geared towards children, but all those dark tones that Tim Burton threw in there with really going all out, probably the most use of blood of any Batman movie, I really like the approach that was taken here and with the world that Tim Burton created, it fits, even if it's too exaggerated, unrealistic for today's modern standards of Batman. Plus that Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman and Michael Keaton Batman relationship is golden. Next up, Batman 1989. This was my first introduction to the Batman character and it made me really see why people love this guy and Tim Burton, what he did in starting off that world and reinventing Batman because everything that people had seen before was just Adam West Batman, which was a respectable Batman for his time. But just the vision Tim Burton had here, how amazing his Gotham turned out. And Jack Nicholson setting a real high standard for Joker, it's a great Batman movie. Down to the final two here, this was a really tough decision. I had to rewatch both movies back to back to see which one I actually ended up liking, and it's by the slightest margin, number two on the list, 
The Dark Knight. I really respect what Christopher Nolan was able to pull off here with this version of Batman against Heath Ledger's Joker. This is just the ultimate story of those two iconic characters, Batman versus Joker, touched in such a cinematic way that every time I rewatch it, I just think how brilliant this film is. But the reason it's not number one is just because I feel like Christian Bale's Batman is still missing that awe factor, being that they made him a little too realistic and grounded. Same thing with how they kind of pushed aside Two Faces and just really rushed him into the story only to get rid of him by the end. Little gripes like that that held it back from being perfect. Which is why The Batman, directed by Matt Reeves to me, is the perfect Batman movie. Not only do we finally get intelligent Batman, we get one that has the presence, the brooding feeling when he's on screen. Criminals fear him, just those opening sequences that happen in this movie. The story is also told so wonderfully since they're not dealing with origins or telling you where every character comes from. I loved how they just had everything flow nicely together, showing off the Riddler, Penguin, Catwoman. It's a world that does feel grounded and realistic, but not so far as maybe one day we could see something like a Clayface or a Mr. Freeze pop up in here and it wouldn't feel that weird. All right, from there I want to go ahead and rank the Gotham cities because Gotham I think is an important part of a Batman story here. Starting off with my least favorite Gotham City, Christopher Nolan's Gotham. Look, it's fine to love Christopher Nolan in his movies here, but you gotta admit, he just turned Gotham into a regular old city. Sure, he tried doing something a little different in Batman Begins, but that was just in one of his movies. The rest of the trilogy, it just turned into a city with no style or flavor, and that's just with his realistic take. So I understand why he did it, but I wish they went with a stylized Gotham. The next Gotham City here is Zack Snyder's version of Gotham. This is also kind of a hard one to place on the list since Ben Affleck never really got his own solo movie, but we do get a lot of bits and pieces of Gotham from Batman vs Superman, Zack Snyder's Justice League, and just those shots that we get in there, it does look like a grimy, crime-written Gotham, but there was also nothing really there too special where it stood out or it felt like a different city. It just felt like a crime-written city. The next best Gotham City was Joel Schumacher's Gotham, okay? You might say it's way over the top. It took what Tim Burton did with his Gotham and just threw acid and all kinds of drugs and made it gigantic. The architecture is balls to the wall crazy. Really, the streets and roads make no sense, but I still like it because it's a world that does not feel like ours and like a place I can't go visit and that's where I think Batman belongs and a place between grounded but fantasy. Also Joel Schumacher had some pretty great shots in his Gotham. My second favorite Gotham City though has to be Matt Reeves' Gotham. Just the way he portrays Gotham in here actually feels so badass. Sure it seems like it rains in this place 24-7 but even when it does it still makes the city feel very lively. All the architecture worked for me and those light up billboards the dark alleyways within Gotham and some of these buildings. To me, it was a perfect blend of trying to be realistic, but not at the same time. Still, I think Tim Burton's Gotham still takes it by a mile, okay? He set the standard for what Gotham City should look like in live action form, down to where Batman the Animated Series took inspiration from that. Even the Arkham games took inspiration from Tim Burton's Gotham and made it their own. In both Tim Burton movies, he makes Gotham feel like a real character and a part of Batman, and I love that. Moving on to who had the best Bruce Wayne persona. Now this is the side of Batman that is also wearing a mask without wearing a mask. Bruce Wayne is this other side of Batman that pretends to be this billionaire playboy, but at the same time should also be a philanthropist either working with Wayne Enterprises or using his money and resources to help Gotham outside of in that rubber suit. So that's what I'm looking for when I say best Bruce Wayne persona. And so bottom of the list, I love you, man, but Robert Pattinson. And that's no hate to Robert Pattinson's new edition of Batman. It's just his Bruce Wayne persona does not exist as far as this first movie. Once he gets a couple of more movies and they kind of give an evolution to his Bruce Wayne, and he'll definitely be higher on the list. I can feel it. But as of right now with this one movie, he was someone who doesn't want to be Bruce Wayne. He doesn't like going out. He's stuck indoors just wanting to be Batman. Next up, George Clooney. It's funny to me that Clooney is on top of Pattinson for any category here, but whatever. Make fun of it all you want, but go back and watch Batman and Robin. George Clooney actually does some stuff as Bruce Wayne when he's talking to Poison Ivy and she hands him a plan for Gotham City to help the plants and he mentions why it would be bad for the people, his company, and overall, it's like good Bruce Wayne stuff. Next one, Michael Keaton is Bruce Wayne. Now, Tim Burton didn't like showing a lot of Batman or even a lot of Bruce Wayne. He loved focusing on the villains in his movie. But when we would get Michael Keaton as Bruce Wayne, we would see that he would play off that playboy persona, not wanting to let people know that there's a chance he could be Batman when he acts really crazy and eccentric in front of the Joker, but still smart enough to protect himself with that trait. Those are some of the Bruce Wayne-isms that I like to see, which is why Val Kilmer is above Michael Keaton in Bruce Wayne persona. This was the first time in those early 
early Batman movies where we actually saw Batman talking to his employees, walking around Wayne Enterprises, going to his office, leading to the Batcave. Also those scenes with Val Kilmer whenever Robin's origin is happening and he stands up and tells everyone, I'm Batman, gets down on that circus floor and starts fighting people as Bruce Wayne. That was like one of the first times we got a really good combination of Batman and Bruce Wayne together. But the final two, man, I've been saying all week that I think Christian Bale is the best Bruce Wayne. Oh, I'm gonna have to put him number two. I really did think Christian Bale was the best Bruce Wayne because it was a big part of Batman Begins where he's like, I gotta find an identity for Bruce Wayne. I gotta hang out with these models. I gotta be an a-hole to people. So I was like, yeah, that's exactly what Bruce Wayne is. But then we get to Dark Knight Rises and he doesn't want to do the business side of Bruce Wayne. He doesn't want to continue with the company. In fact, he's almost bankrupt Wayne Enterprises. So although he has the playboy side, he doesn't have the businessman side of him that I want a Bruce Wayne to have, which is why number one is Ben Affleck. That's kind of the benefit of not getting your own solo movie, just the little bits and details they give us in Batman vs Superman. His Bruce Wayne was very much there, running a company, working with employees, trying to save them at the beginning of Batman vs Superman. He even turns on his Bruce Wayne charm a little bit when he gets caught going to the wrong places saying things like, I like his shoes. Ben is the better Bruce Wayne, man. Moving on to Batmobiles. Now, I think a lot of us will categorize these differently, whether you want to base them off appearance or performance, the gadgets they've had, or how useful they are. I'm a combination of appearance and performance. So with that said, bottom of the list, the Batman and Robin Mobile, okay? That one just straight up looks like you made a toy car and then used some Ant-Man formula to make a giant. It's really a joke in my opinion. Too much lights. Next up, the Batman Forever Mobile. I hate how it looks like you just ripped off the top of the 89 mobile and now we can just see the rib cage of this new one. I get they were trying to do something different but I don't think they succeeded there. Next up the tumbler. I've always been up and down with the tumbler just because I felt like it's just such a big meaty tank of a car. Anytime Bale is driving that thing he is just destroying stuff left and right. It just doesn't come off that practical for Batman to do his slick crime fighting in Gotham but I do like some of the transformations within it where it turns into a bike. Next up Ben Affleck's Batmobile. This was kind of a good combination of a tank but also still a car we didn't get so much to see about it but we do know thing is packed with machine guns and it is super destructive it reminds me a lot of the arkham batmobile in there and so that was kind of cool to see it again just doesn't feel as practical as i would like i wish we could have seen more scenes of it being stealthy or doing other things than just destroying stuff which is why i'm gonna put robert pattinson's batmobile as number two on the list this was a car that you could see being stealthy probably hiding in the shadows but when it needs to intimidate and go after its prey Boy, does it shine all the way, because in this movie, they made that whole Batmobile sequence amazing to look at, a complete beast. You feel that this thing is really strong, and it got the job done for wanting to catch who he wanted. But when it comes down to it, just the look of the 1989 Batmobile that Tim Burton created, that thing is an absolute beaut. Like, it'll stand the test of time. Some of these other cars on the list will eventually just look old to us, but I feel like the 89 car is timeless. Also, Tim Burton did a great job of showcasing gadgets that that car had and how useful it was in battle. Sure, it needs a little grapple gun to be able to turn corners, but hey, it at least has that and several other features. That Batmobile to me will always be my favorite and I can't wait to see it again in the flash. Moving on to best bat suit. Now, this will be kind of different because there have been several different incarnations of the bat suit, so I've decided to just group them together with who wore that bat suit. But if you think there's a specific one out here that stands out, you'd let me know. I'm just trying to go ahead and save time in this video. Starting off bottom of the list, the George Clooney suits, okay? First off, his main bat suit is just an all black plain suit. There's no style or flavor to it, and it's got the bat nipples. Then when he does change into a suit, it just turns into this blue and silver that I guess was supposed to be anti-freeze protective, but really it did not look cool at all to me. It looked very goofy. Funko Pop of it is cool though, so I, I bought that right. Next up, Val Kilmer suits. Now I don't think his original Batman suit that Val Kilmer wore is all that bad. It's just got them bat nipples on it. I like the shiny look of it and even the abs and rib cages even though it looks a little bubbly I think it's still a pretty cool suit the metallic look of it really makes it stand out It's just that silver suit he gets at the end that I'm like whoa what happened here who went ahead and spray painted this guy's suit? It just really did not work for me. Next one on the list is the Christian Bale suits. Now he had two different suits. If I had to be honest with you, I kind of liked his Batman Begins suit more than his Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises suit. 
I just feel like although that one still had the stiff neck syndrome, he felt actually intimidating and big in it. So then when he gets to his Dark Knight suit, it just makes him come off a little skinnier and tinier than I would like. Kind of taking away some of that fear factor that Batman has, but also it's the cow. I hate how they kind of closed off his chin so you can't really even see this Batman's jawline and you're just looking at basically his goatee area. From there, the Robert Pattinson suit. Look, he's only gotten one suit so far. I know a lot of people were hoping he'd get like a suit change by the end of this movie. I don't think we're going to get that now to the next film. But as far as his first suit goes, I had to admit this was a suit that had to grow on me. We saw this suit like over two years ago. And since then, every time I looked at it, I liked it more and more. And then by the time I saw it in the Batman, I was like, this suit is freaking fantastic. I love it. Mixed in with all the other gadgets and compartments of it, how you can take off the emblem and it's actually one of his knives. It's a really great suit and I can't wait to see what other upgrades he makes down the line. Number two on the list though has to be Ben Affleck, by far the one who has gotten the most comic accurate suits out of all the Batman. Starting off with his classic suit, I mean that thing is just literally pulled from the Dark Knight Returns. The only thing I would tweak about it is the oversized emblem on his chest and just sometimes the padding that they use on this specific suit like makes him look a little fat. And I know Ben Affleck's not fat, but if they just toned down that padding a little bit, I think it would have gone a long way with me. And the other two suits, the mechanized suit, literally again pulled from the comics, looks good in live action form. And I even like his nightmare suit. It's a different look to Batman. I feel like he would be hot as hell in that suit given the climate, but it's a cool suit. Still, my number one will be Michael Keaton's suit. I feel like that is the most iconic Batman suit you'll get, even if it's not all comic accurate. It's the perfect touches of black with yellow. Even the slight tweaked up version that they put in returns only enhances the look of that suit. Honestly, when I think about it, everything appearance wise with the Michael Keaton version of Batman is the best thanks to Tim Burton, the suits, the Batmobile, the Gotham. That's where that version of Michael Keaton really shines for me. But before I get to who is the best Batman, let's go ahead and rank all these villains that we've had come out in live action form. I think there's going to be some controversial ones on here, so let me know who you would rank high and low. Starting off, bottom of the list, Talia al Ghul. My father's work is done. Do I need to say more? From there, Bane from Batman and Robin. They literally just turned him into a muscle-bound caveman. Little character development, full-on just a henchman for Poison Ivy. Sure, he actually uses some of the Venom serum, but that's really about it. I was not a fan of what they did with him, and even his design was kind of meant. From there, Ross al Ghul. Liam Neeson is awesome, but that was one of the parts of the Nolan trilogy I could never get behind. I was never a big fan of the League of Shadows, and I just didn't feel the threatening presence Liam Neeson had on Batman. He just seemed like an evil guy that had something to do and was using Scarecrow. Next up, Two-Face from Batman Forever. I like Tommy Lee Jones as an actor, but this time around he just went way too wacky with Two-Face. I don't like the design choice of giving him this like purplish skin. How he was just really used as a set piece so that everything around Two-Face can be divided into from good and bad. The chemistry between him and Riddler would have worked way better in their movie if he was more straight-faced and serious. Next up, Poison Ivy. I think they did the best that they could with bringing her in. They got her controlling plants and wanting to protect Gotham in that aspect. I even like the way she played on breaking up Batman and Robin's relationship. I just stopped buying into Poison Ivy when she randomly fell in love with Mr. Freeze just because he was like the one person she could kiss and it wouldn't affect him. And I guess speaking of Mr. Freeze, next up, is Mr. Freeze. What the animated series did with the Heart of Ice storyline, giving Mr. Freeze a really great origin story, and then Batman and Robin trying to do that origin in such a silly, goofy movie was such a disservice to the character. There's moments of seriousness thrown in there, and Arnold could have been a great Mr. Freeze if he wasn't the guy just throwing out ice puns left and right. I will say though, awesome costume. I really do like his costume. Next up, Jim Carrey's Riddler. This might be my Jim Carrey bias because I love him as an actor, and anytime he does anything, I'm gonna watch it there, and watching him as the Riddler as a kid over and over. I loved it, man. The guy is wacky wild. He plays it so fun. It is over the top, but I really dug what he was doing with it, especially when he's destroying the Batmobile. He was a real nuisance to Batman in that movie. From there, Penguin, played by Danny DeVito. This was a dark and weird take on the Penguin here, an orphan thrown to the sewers, raised by penguins. But the storyline he was given in Batman Returns was wanting to get back at the city and all the things he does, down to even having Trick Umbrella 
umbrellas with different weapons. I thought it was a great new interpretation of Penguin that fit the Tim Burton world. I would just never let him near my nose. Next up, Tom Hardy's Bane. Finally, they gave us a Bane who was intelligent, could go ahead and destroy the bat, and that's exactly what happened in Dark Knight Rises. It just sucks by the end of it. He turned out to be another henchman working for the League of Shadows, a part of Ra's al Ghul's gang, a man who was in love with a woman who went behind his back to sleep with Batman. It's just like, could you not destroy so much awesomeness about Bane in the last five minutes of his screen appearance? From there, Scarecrow. I think Scarecrow could have been such an amazing villain in the Christopher Nolan trilogy because everything we got of him worked really well, especially with the visuals that Christopher Nolan threw out there. Just like what Batman looked like with that fear gas was awesome. It just sucks how underutilized he was because I felt like he could have been something more than just a cameo throughout the Nolan trilogy. The next character here I had to go back in editing and add on and that's Colin Farrell's The Penguin. We just have so many Batman villains I knew I missed one but he was one that really surprised me in the Batman and you could even argue this is pre Penguin the way they are setting him up in this universe and in his coming to power I think is going to be something extremely amazing to see but he's already a villain that wants it bad and when you have a villain like that they're willing to do anything plus the performance of Colin Farrell going ahead and disappearing in that makeup really brought it to another level for me then I would put Two-Face from Dark Knight next up on the list I really like the origin story they pulled off here with this version of Harvey Dent. His whole speech about you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain was such a perfect summary of what happens to his character and you really feel for him and understand why he turns into Two-Face by the end of it. It's just again, I hate how quickly they killed him off. Next two on the list, Paul Dano's Riddler. Oh my god, his Riddler was not only wacky, crazy, wild, made me laugh, but the dude was terrifying. He's a scary villain that if he gets his hands on you, he's gonna put you in one of his Riddler traps. And if you don't know how to solve riddles, boy, you screwed. I loved how much of a destruction he was to this version of Gotham City, how he was kind of ahead of the game in Batman in certain scenarios to where even this version of Batman couldn't solve all his riddles and the possibility and hinting for more of him in his future. Ooh, I can't wait to see more of this Riddler. They did justice with him. Just maybe give him that suit and tie now. But number one, come on, do I, do I even have to talk about why? Heath Ledger's Joker. This man is still the definitive best Joker we've ever had and whoever is the next Joker man, I feel sorry for you because I don't know how you're going to beat this performance. Man did everything we could have ever wanted from a Joker and he's basically what carries one of the best Batman movies ever made, The Dark Knight. There's a reason out of all these Batman villains, he's the one that's won an Oscar for his performance. But now getting to the final part of the ranking here, who is the best Batman at the end of the day? Let's start it off here, George Clooney at the bottom. I just have to play you this one clip and we move on. Hi Freeze, I'm Batman. Okay, now, next up, Val Kilmer. This was the first time we got a good combination of Bruce Wayne and Batman all put into one, and maybe if they went with a darker version that Joel Schumacher wanted to release for Batman and ever, he'd be higher on the list, but for now, he was a pretty good Batman. Next up, Christian Bales. I know people are gonna give me flack for that, but I think you are getting a little bit taken away from Batman when you try making him a little too real and grounded. While there's a lot of things I like in the Nolan trilogy, I think having a Batman that only lasted about two years time because of how much his body got whipped and taken down is a reason Batman shouldn't always be treated as super grounded and realistic. I've always said I prefer the Bruce Wayne side of Christian Bale over his Batman side. Next up on the list, Michael Keaton as Batman. The guy is really good as Batman, but he's also just a straight up killer. True, most of the people on this list are, but he just does it so unapologetically. And even in his first Batman movie, he doesn't really have an arc or character growth. But I think it's in Batman Returns where I grew to like him a lot more, especially with the relationship he had with Selina Kyle. He's also one that I think brings that Batman presence on screen with some of the silhouettes that he has and bringing fear into the criminals of Gotham. Last two. Ben Affleck's Batman. This is still why I'm so sad he never got his own full solo movie because this guy had the potential to be one of the best. He is the closest we have come to that comic book Arkham style Batman because his version, they weren't worried too much about the realism, even the way his body movements go where they do turn him fully CGI, but it works to give you that fluid nature of Batman and the way he comes off. We gotta remember this was also a Batman who actually got to basically defeat Superman. That's gotta freaking count for something when they put a Batman like that on screen but the thing that he was lacking that the number one had 
is the intelligence. Robert Pattinson's Batman is number one on my list because he's the first Batman that actually proves to us he's the world's greatest detective. He's got the brain behind him. He's also got the fear factor where criminals are actually scared of him. Mixed in with all the gadgets, his suit, and the atmosphere. Like, this guy to me right now is my favorite live-action Batman, and I hope future sequels don't ruin that because I feel like there is a great evolution for his character where right now, He's barely becoming the Batman he needs to be, and he's still one of the best Batmans we've ever had. But again, those are just my opinions with ranking these Batman characters. I would love to hear from you guys. Where would you place certain characters on this list? Anything and everything, be sure to like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris. Take care.